First though, some people say that if there really are captured UFOs, the authorities couldn't keep it a secret, somehow word would get out. Well maybe that's what we're about to see. Information that's leaked out. Area 51 is the most secret military base in the world. Many people have seen strange lights performing maneuvers above it. And recently, President Clinton placed a huge exclusion zone around it, so it's now impossible to view the base. What are the dark secrets that lie inside Area 51? The American government denies that this place even exists. But this Russian satellite photo tells a different story showing huge hangars and an enormous runway. The place is Area 51 in the Nevada desert. It was built in the 1950s to test top secret aircraft. The stealth fighter was developed here. Security's tight inside and outside the base. American scientist Robert Lazar claimed he worked in the highest security section called S-4. The security was unbelievably oppressive. There was a security guard everywhere following you all the time. Uh, you, there was never any free discussion allowed, which is the basis of science. Recently, Lazar caused a sensation when he revealed that he'd been ordered to investigate the propulsion systems of captured alien spacecraft. My work involved the back engineering of an extraterrestrial craft, specifically the propulsion and power source. The UFOs are very typical. As far as a typical UFO is, it's two inverted dishes, two inverted pie plates, if you wish, and with a, a hump on the top, metallic looking, no wings, no fins, no visible propulsion source. Inside, they're very sparse. Uh, if you come in the main entryway, you'll see three seats, the central reactor and waveguide that goes to the ceiling, uh, the three gravity amplifiers surrounding it, and you'll really see just about nothing else. The authorities immediately denied his claims, and now he says they've tried to erase his identity from all official records. George Knapp is a well-respected investigative reporter with KLAS-TV. He broke the story, including the claim that Lazar worked at Los Alamos in New Mexico, where the atomic bomb was developed. The lab denied any knowledge of his existence, denied that he'd ever worked there. We came back with a phone book from the lab that shows Bob's name in it, that he, he was, in fact, there, they still denied any knowledge that he had ever worked there. I asked Bob if he'd be willing to take a polygraph test, and he didn't hesitate. The polygraph examiner, after conducting a series of four different tests, concluded that Bob is telling the truth about what he saw out there, about working at the base, about seeing the flying saucers, about working on anti-gravity propulsion systems, telling the truth. I had a former employee quiz him for a period of two hours about simple things, not where the flying saucers stored, but... Uh, where's the cafeteria? How do you pay for your meal? What's it look like inside? Those sorts of things. And that employee is convinced that Bob really was out there. Were you threatened? I was threatened and my wife's life was threatened also. And why do you think that those threats were not carried out? Probably because that I went public. In the recent blockbusting film Independence Day, the plot features Area 51 and a recovered alien spacecraft. As you can see from the repairs, we've been trying to put her back together since the late 1960s. It's long been suggested that alien spacecraft have crashed on Earth. It's only happened in the last few days. The most famous incident happened allegedly near Roswell Air Base, New Mexico, in 1947. Eyewitnesses claim they saw wreckage of a flying saucer and injured extraterrestrials. Whatever happened at Roswell, there's no dispute about the many official documents which indicate the American government knows more than it's letting on about UFOs. How did these craft get into the hands of the US government? I really have no idea how the craft got there. I don't believe there were crashes because the craft weren't damaged. Uh, and that's about all that I can say. How do you know, though, that these were extraterrestrial craft? First of all, we were back engineering the technology which means we're taking a finished product and trying to figure out how it was originally designed and developed. Uh, second of all, the technology that we're dealing with doesn't exist. Did you ever see them fly? Well, they were frequently tested. They were tested normally on Wednesday nights when the traffic was lowest in the area. I saw one test close up and uh, several tests at a distance of about 15 miles. Certainly, the American military have been testing saucer-shaped craft. This top-secret research film from the 60s has just come to light. But even after nearly 30 years, 
the security services still refuse to talk about it. More recently, work on so-called black projects has been carried out at Area 51, including the stealth aircraft and strategic defense initiative weapons to be used in outer space. But were they only developed to protect America against earthly enemies? Or was there a more urgent purpose behind President Reagan's Star Wars project? Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This unique NASA transmission shows an object following the space shuttle. The picture flares in what could be a magnetic pulse. Next, is this a missile or laser weapon being fired from Earth at the UFO? The UFO changes direction and accelerates away at what experts believe to be a speed of up to 900,000 miles an hour. Could it be the UFO was taking evasive action from Star Wars missiles fired at it from the Earth? Many believe this is only the latest evidence of a continuing series of cover-ups of the real truth about UFOs.